Are you without understanding? Don't you see what goes into a person from the outside cannot defile him? Since it enters his heart, but his stomach and is expelled. Thus he declared all foods clean. Jesus declared all foods clean. Now, some of you might like bacon. You can talk to your doctor if it's good for your heart, but you're free to eat it. Amen. Whether it's wise to eat too much of it or not is beside the point. But God has liberated us from the restriction. I heard a funny story about some people in lockdown. And a lot of them were converting to a religion that forbids the eating of pork. So when the Christian evangelist came in and told me about that, a lot of them flicked back, flicked back and converted to Christianity instead. So you can see the power of a liberating gospel. Amen? Amen? The power of a liberating gospel. In Acts 10, 14, Peter says, well, he was, he was, there was a sheet of unclean animals dropped before him. I'm not going to go through the whole story, but just the point. By no means, Lord, I've never eaten anything common or unclean. And the voice came from heaven a second time. What God has made clean, do not call common. common, common. <laughs> you know, when God speaks, there's always that little echo on the end. Echo on the end, echo on the end. The other day, Matt and I were talking, and we realized that we're getting so close that sometimes he even finishes my sentences. <laughs> there it is, folks. The Ten Commandments are all reiterate, reiterated by Jesus and the Apostles except the keeping of the Sabbath. We won't go into that today. I won't list them all, but if you search the word blaspheme, idol, murder, adultery, or you know the derivatives of those, adulterer, idolatry, you will see that these are still forbidden. We're not free to break the Ten Commandments. We're internally motivated to fulfill it. Amen. Without a restriction, we have a liberating eternal power. One example is from Jesus himself in Matthew 19, 17 to uh, 19. He said to them, why do you ask me about what is good? There's only one who is good. If you would end in life, keep the commandments. He said, which ones? Jesus said, you shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother and love your neighbor as yourself. Did Jesus say, oh, don't worry about that. The more of Moses is passe. If you love your neighbor as yourself without the Spirit of God in you, you're not following God, you're following the flesh. Without the Spirit of God, loving your neighbor as yourself is hippiedom. It's not Christianity. If it feels good, do it. That's what the world's doing today. They're saying, oh, it's an act of love. It's okay. And people are getting insane. There are people in the world that illegally married their dogs. Legally marrying themselves. Legally marrying pictures of people. This is true, man. When you take the word of God out and you promote loving your neighbor as yourself, you don't get anything sane at all. You get hippiedom. If it feels good, do it. But with the spirit of God and you love your neighbor as yourself, you automatically fulfill the law of God, which is now written in your heart. Are you getting me? Are you with me? Remember that. What was an external restriction has now become an internal motivation. <coughs> James 1.7, we're just going on the first point that God doesn't change. You get that? We're just going to go through this line upon line. If you skip to verse 10, you miss the context. And a context without a text is either a con or a pretext. You're all supposed to laugh about that. Yeah. Thank you. James 1.17, every good and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variation or shadow of turning. There's no variation or shadow of turning with the Father of lights. Amen. He is the Lord, He changes not. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. And yesterday means the Old Testament. Today means today, and forever means... Forever. Amen. Happily ever after. So tithes are mentioned ten times in the New Testament, and all in the camp context of Jesus. Man came to Jesus, Luke 18, 12. I fast twice a week and I give tithes of all I get. Now, did Jesus condemn him for his tithing? No. But he did condemn his boasting about it. Tithing doesn't justify you. It doesn't save you. But it is a right reaction to a relationship with God. It's a response 
to a right relationship with God. It's what Jesus said. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified. That was the one who was beating his chest and saying, God, forgive me, I'm a sinner. Everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. The one who humbles himself will be exalted. Now, Jesus didn't say he who tires will be humbled. He said he who exalts himself. But Jesus didn't say it was wrong for that man to do that. He said it was wrong to boast about it and think somehow his works had gained him access to God. We are saved for works, not by works. Yeah, that's good. What you do as a response to the grace of God is a work that will be rewarded in the day of judgment. The day of judgment for Christians is the day of reward. Amen. You get it? Yeah. Amen. I'm happy about that. Amen. It's much the same as Paul saying in 1 Corinthians 31, If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I'm a noisy gong and a clanging cymbal. Is he saying don't speak in tongues, just love one another? No. He's saying if you do it, when you do it, and I do it, and I thank God I do it more than you all, he says in 1 Corinthians 14. Speak in tongues. Exercise the gifts of the Holy Spirit, but do it with the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Speak in tongues with love. Prophesy with peace. Heal with joy. You see? When you get the gifts and the fruit going together, wow, then that's a really good day. So being loving and concerned to one another is Paul's point. Don't tell how good... Don't tell God how good you are because he knows otherwise. <coughs> Jesus said, why do you call me good? Only God is good. Is he denying his deity? No. Perhaps he's declaring his deity. If I'm really good, then I must be God. Is that what you're saying? It depends how you read it. But listen to this. Jesus says about tithing again in Matthew 23, 23. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, you actors. You tithe mint and dill and cumin or cumin, and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faith, these ought you to have done, not leaving the other undone. So he said, you should be tithing, but don't tithe and despise those that don't. Don't tithe and think that makes you right with God. Remember that without justice and mercy and faith, tithing is a dead work. But if you've got God's love in your heart, if you've got His Spirit in your heart, and you have a heart for justice, mercy, and faith, and you tithe, God's going to do something incredible in your life. And we're about to find out exactly what that is, and some of you might even know. Matthew 6, 1-3. Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. That's when you give, when you give, when you give, not if you give, when you give. To the needy, to the needy, sound no trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and the streets. They think they may be praised by others. Truly I say, they have received their reward. They have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. I love it sometimes we're at the New Hope Care fundraising for our outreach to the poor of Brisbane. Oh, we just received a $20,000 donation, but the donor does not want to be identified. Good for him. He's got a reward from God in heaven. Amen. Because Amen. he did it for glory of God and out of love for the people of Brisbane. He didn't do it to get his own accolade because he was running for an election campaign or something like that. Now, sometimes people are acknowledged and that's fine. But the motivation behind it, you see, Jesus internalizes the law and makes it a matter of motivation. What were you thinking when you were doing it? How was your heart when you were doing it? Was your heart right with God when you were doing it? Were you motivated by the love of God? Did the love of Christ constrain you, as Paul says? Matthew 5, 42, give to the one who begs from you. Don't refuse the one who would borrow from you. Now, a less and less is becoming into a cash-free society, but I used to, and I, I still do when I get them, it's rarer, I carry my coins in my right back pocket. If I meet a, meet a beggar, I will, I will, I will, I'm a bit cold and calculating sometimes, I'll feel real big and give him $2, but if I'm in a really generous mood, I'll just empty it and don't even count it. It could be three seventy nine. it's enough to get a coffee. If I have a dollar sometimes, I'll, I'll say, do you want a coffee, mate? I'll go and buy him one at 7-Eleven. And some friends say, I oh, don't give to them, they're with the mafia. <laughs> now I've had people say that to me. I said, look, Jesus said, Give to the one who begs from you. I will be rewarded by my giving. He will be judged if he's being deceitful. I'm going to trust God. The hell's angels used to have a saying, kill them all, let God sort them out. <laughs> now, that is a very negative thing, but I've turned that around. I said, give to them all, let God sort them out. Yeah. Give to them all, let God sort them out. Love them all, let God sort them out. Bless 
of all, let God sort them out. If I give him, if I give him, say, God bless you, mate. Jesus loves you. Here's a tract for you to read. Then I'm glorifying my Father, which is in heaven. And maybe he'll read that and go home and get saved. Finally, in Hebrews 7, is a passage about tithing. This 